All right, you guys asked for it. We did a couple brand new vehicle reviews, but we are starting our series doing used vehicle reviews. Something just off warranty, something that's had uh, a little bit of work done maybe, so we can let you guys know what is the best vehicle after a little bit of wear and tear. Here we go. All right, so we're here with Austin, and you are gonna give me the keys to your 2020 F-150? I sure am. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> so you bought it, you've had it since new? Yeah, I bought it brand new in uh, October of 2020. Uh, it's just been my daily driver. I threw a set of wheels and tires on it, uh, MBRP exhaust, and that's pretty much it. I've left it stock otherwise. Uh, nice. Regular oil changes and... Right off the bat, would you buy it again? I think I would buy another one. Oh, see, that's not like, yes, I well, love it. <laughs> so, uh, first things first, have you been a Ford man all your life? No, I am a diehard Chevy guy. Okay, so tell us how that originated. Why, why did you end up with an F-150? Well, to be honest, I don't like the new body style of GMs. And I, I wanted an ECM that I could tune once it's out of warranty, which it, I'm pretty sure it is now. It's got okay. 48,000 on it. Okay, perfect. So... Yeah, I just wanted something that I could play with a little bit when the day comes, and the new five liters, they uh, they rip pretty good. So. Good, right on. Have you had any warranty work done? Any recalls or anything? Um, I believe the uh, the windshield wiper arms have been recalled. I haven't taken it in for it, so if the wiper flies off, <laughs> I don't think it will, but it shouldn't. <laughs> And the truck's actually been in for paint. The rockers in the lower half of the body weren't clear coated very well, so. So the clear coat was coming off? Yeah, the truck was actually about, it was it was paint from the body line down. Oh, really? It got all redone. <laughs> After that, it held up pretty good. Okay, so Ford dealership painted it for you or they subbed it out to whatever they shop? They subbed it out to another shop. Okay, and was the dealership good to work with? Like They were pretty good to work with. They originally fixed like a couple things on it, but the truck kind of looked like garb still. <laughs> so I took it back and I said, hey guys, like just have a look at this. And there was some runs in the paint and stuff like that, even from factory. They took it in and they got it fixed again. And they told me that if it had any other issues to take it back to the dealership where I bought it, okay. which is about two hours away. So oh. I never did. But yeah, other than that, it's been pretty good. And it's all aluminum. Them, right? It's all aluminum except okay. for where it's plastic. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. And so what model is it? XLT? It's an XLT FX4. I, I removed the stickers off of the back, but yeah, it yeah. is an FX4. Extended cab, it's fairly loaded, not fully loaded. It hasn't got a sunroof, but it's got heated seat, sliding rear window on it. I don't think it has a CD player, but they, they, they don't <laughs> they anymore. They did away with it. Yeah, so, <laughs> but it's got a lot of good stuff in it. Um, I'm pretty happy with it. I think to get anything more than that, it would have been like an extra $20,000. Yeah. I, I think it would have had to move up to a, a Lariat. So. Okay. Four door, but suicide door? Yeah, it's a suicide door on the back and they actually open 180 degrees too, which is yeah. pretty convenient. Yeah, nice storage under the back and everything, right? Yeah, yeah. flat floor in the back. Yeah. So I'm taking the truck actually to Kentucky this weekend. So <laughs> the flat floor in the back might be nice because all the hotel rooms are booked. I'm going to sleep in the back, I think. So we're skipping LS Fest so we can go to Ford Fest. I got to get that uh, F-350 done and hopefully we'll take that. So Conveniently, I'm taking my Ford to LS Fest, <laughs> but I'm putting my Chevy on the back. So We are actually two and a half hours away. We're going to drive it home. We're gonna get uh, my impressions on it. We're gonna do an oil change on it, do an oil analysis on it. There was a TSB on the 18, 19, and 25 O's. So have, has yours been using any oil? I don't believe so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll get you an oil analysis. I check it when I change it. <laughs> Sun is just about due, right? How long since the last oil change? Uh, probably since late spring. I don't know how many K, but it hasn't came up on the dash. So I think it comes up on the dash at 10,000 kilometers. Yeah. It's probably around aid on synthetic oil okay okay perfect austin's gonna come drive our way and then we'll give him the truck back and we'll have a, a full review thanks a lot austin appreciate Thank it <laughs> okay so the point of these reviews is to go over a vehicle randomly pick one out of the thin air and take a good look at it we want to see how the quality of the vehicle holds up after a couple years of being driven we have a harsh climate where we live where it gets extremely cold and it gets extremely hot so the temperature fluctuation could be up to 50 degrees celsius the plastics the aluminum the steel is all subjected to size changes and very very hard on vehicles we'll go over technical service bulletins those are bulletins that the manufacturer releases that they know is a problem 
um, and um, the solutions to those. We'll go over recalls and warranty claims, but that doesn't mean that that is going to happen across the board on whatever model that we review. Keeping in mind that uh, we're trying to do an unbiased view from the owner, who obviously, hopefully, loves their vehicles, and me as a mechanic on what I would like and what I don't like um, on a service point of view. All vehicles need repair, all vehicles have their issues. We're just trying to help you guys into buying a vehicle that has the least amount of those and the lowest cost of ownership. So getting into that, this is a 2020 F-150 XLT. This has the five liter Coyote in it and has the 10R80 10 speed transmission. This transmission is shared with GM. It's a, one of the only times they've actually worked together on something. And uh, we reviewed this one behind the three liter Duramax in a 2020 Silverado as well. Really liked it back then and still feels as good now. It has almost 50,000 kilometers on it. And a few of the issues that we've had that we've come across is uh, hard shifting and hunting. They've been using this, I think, since 2018 already. And I think by now they've done something to take care of that. As of right now, cruising along at 62 miles an hour, 100 kilometers an hour, it's not hunting, it's staying happily in 10th gear. Feels great and we have not had any harsh shifting. And a five liter Coyote is an excellent engine choice. Ford does have this problem where they have something really good and they just keep playing with it when they shouldn't. <laughs> and to their defense, it's always a horsepower war and Ford really wanted to get 500 horsepower out of their NA engine leaving the parking lot. Now you can tune this and get 500 uh, horsepower out of it, no problem, but you start mis messing with efficiency and with emissions. So to get that 500 horsepower, Ford uses an aluminum block with twin overhead cams, making it a very large engine, but it tried something new, whereas rather than sticking a steel or a cast sleeve into the engine and then machining that for the pistons, they leave a rough bore in the aluminum and then weld what they call a plasma arc weld in the liner. Then they machine that, allowing them to have a larger bore. So even though they called a five liter, the previous Gen 1 and 2s weren't exactly five liters. These ones with the plasma welding are actually 5.0 liters or even 5.01 or something like that. But um, in doing so, it's something new. Unfortunately, the piston rings have less tension on the rings and isn't able to wipe the oil completely off the cylinder walls after uh, when the piston comes back down again, leaving an oil film in the combustion chamber that in turn gets burnt and comes out the tailpipe, meaning that you could see oil consumption in it. Now this is common in a lot of modern vehicles, our Audi does the exact same. What we're gonna do is an oil analysis on this when we do an oil change that will tell us if there's combustion or if there's any metals in the oil. Um, that could be the plasma lining or it could be the rings themselves or there could be absolutely nothing wrong with it. Okay, so we have a really nice smooth ride still. No squeaks or rattles inside the cabin. It seems to be uh, pretty well put together after 50,000 kilometers. The exhaust is really loud, so I really have to like let off on the exhaust to actually hear, but when I do, I do hear a little bit of wind noise coming in through my driver's door. Like, Aaron, do you hear anything? I don't think so. Okay, so that's probably because this door gets used a lot more than the passenger door, and it will get worse on the highway. Keeping in mind that this is a four door with suicide doors, meaning that the front door latches onto the back door and this opening is a lot wider. If you had the four door version or a regular cab, more than likely you wouldn't hear any of those noises. The exhaust sounds fantastic. I think that's a young man's <laughs> exhaust. <laughs> I, would, I would remove that exhaust before too, too loud, I'm pretty sure, but listen to this. That sounds good. In my opinion, the five liter is still 
the best sounding engine. Compared to the LS's and the Hemi's, it's got the snark, snarky little rasp on. Um, we have the five liter in the uh, Mustang, and there's just something about that sound that I still like it the most. There was a few different engine choices for the 2020 model year. Smallest one being a 2.7 turbo V6. Uh, there was an NA 3.3, which had the optional six speed manual transmission, the five liter and the 3.5 liter uh, turbo engine and the 3.5 high output, which ended up getting you an extra 75 horsepower. The majority of them had the 10R80 transmission, and I think the most desirable one would be the five liter with the 10 speed, which is what we're reviewing today. Well, at 70 mile an hour, the wind noise is much more prominent and I feel a little vibration in my uh, in my seat. The steering wheel is nice and steady and straight, so the front suspension seems fine. Again, as you might have noticed, these are not the stock tires. So that could be entirely the tires, the way that they're stretched, um, but that's what I'm feeling in this vehicle. Um, it's hard to, hard to show the vibration, the coffee. You can see the rings a little bit, so there's definitely something there. liters and we drove 241 kilometers it took 31.3 liters to fill it up if you do the math that is 13.5 uh, liters per hundred kilometers works out to 17 miles to the gallon so the Lyo meter is actually dead on it is very accurate um, so that's your mileage 17 miles to the gallon and an f-150 that's somewhat loaded not your full full trim but uh aluminum body that's not bad okay so we've driven about 200 kilometers about 150 miles we're just about home and if i'm honest the ride is very stiff you definitely know it's a track um there's a lot more comfortable riding trucks out there and then also the exhaust i don't know if you remember my face when we first stepped on the exhaust but uh, this is it two hours later it's really annoying. <laughs> it's just so loud. Again, that's just aftermarket. But if it was up to me, I would replace these tires and wheels <laughs> and I would get rid of this exhaust. <laughs> Other than that, we'll pull into the shop and then get it on the hoist and uh, take a good look at it. Here we go. So some of the complaints were that the five O's were very noisy. A tick from the valve train and I don't hear anything. This thing purrs like a kitten. You can hear the cam phasers going, adjusting the timing, but um, the engine sounds really, really good. Um, there's also uh, a couple complaints about a ticking noise coming from the bell housing, or kind of like a typewriter noise, and I don't hear that either. I do see the AC running down the bracket for the the cab mount so the AC is dumping on top of the cab mount and then it's running down I don't know whether hose is missed or not but that seems like a dumb place to dump your water at least have a hose so it doesn't sit anywhere I know there's other cars where um, it sits in the subframe and rots the entire subframe out from uh, the inside out but other than that everything looks good underneath here all right there she is inside the shop we can look under uh some good lights and from the outside everything looks really really good all the panel gaps are near perfect which is really nice to see between the doors and the fenders all look really really good the headlights fit really nice nothing's loose or janky i like these five o's there's a pile of room underneath the hood and even though the coyote is a very large engine with the twin overhead cams plenty of room to work on so very nice and easily accessible underneath for all your major repairs. Everything looks good. Um, check the oil level before we drain the oil. And the oil level is right where it's supposed to be. So this one is not burning oil. Um, good news. I suspect that the oil analysis will come back very good. So we'll throw it up on the hoist. Jack her up, take a look underneath, and swap the oil. Here we go. Okay, so first impressions looking underneath the truck. It looks 
really, really good. Got a little bit of rust on our front drive shaft, and that is it. And you know why? It's because it's a painted frame. See that black paint underneath the oil that was sprayed on there? So this truck has been under oiled. You know that the owner likes it and appreciates it. <laughs> so everything looks really good underneath here. Uh, rockers could be done again. She's a little light there, probably because of the water washing that oil off from the front tires there. Now keep in mind this thing is two years old and overall underneath here looks way better than the, the GM we reviewed. It was six months old and it had a lot more rust than this. So kudos to Ford for painting their frame. That's fantastic. Welds look really good. Very nicely done. Not the best weld there, but the frame, frame welds look really good. Very nice. A little bit of rust starting just right here, but that is not bad. We've got no leaks on the output shaft. Generally, your drive shaft is a big source of leaks from right here, and it is a one-piece drive shaft, meaning that it is really cheap to replace this. Uh, the older models had a two-piece drive shaft, so it would have a $30 hanger bearing right here. And uh, when the hanger bearing went, you had to replace the drive shaft because they welded the yoke in front of the hanger bearing. But they've gone away with that, so when the U joints go, it's $30 for a U joint, which are not greasable, but that's typical. Grease U joints have been gone for a long time. Everything else back here looks really good. Nice big fuel tank. They take full advantage of the entire space allotted. So should be a nice uh, long drive. I think I'd set a thousand kilometers to a tank, which is really, really generous. The um, one thing I don't like is this composite uh, transmission oil pan, and that is a pain to work on. So your exhaust actually goes underneath the oil pan and the cooler goes in the front of it. So. In order to remove this pan, uh, you have to actually jack up the, there's something to do back here. You actually have to undo the mounts for the cross member, get rid of the cross member, jack the transmission up, remove the cooler and the lines going to the side of the transmission, um, get the exhaust out of the way, and then pull your lines right out of the side of the transmission for the cooler, and then you can drop the pan to service it. So really dumb design but um, I'm, I'm trying to think of what the GM looked like with the same transmission. Uh, it more than likely would be typically the same. Um, front suspension looks really good. Non-greasable uh, joints everywhere. So the upper and the, um, or the ball joint on the bottom and on the top are not greasable. So there's really nothing to service on the front end and that, is uh, typical as well. Grease fittings work, except if you don't grease them, then sealed units last a lot longer. We got nice beefy tie rod ends. They all look like they're in good shape. Um, and uh, overall, very good impressions underneath this truck. Uh, oil filter, nice and easy to get out there. They got a little channel where the oil can run down and lubricate the front. I see that one engineer um, was born beside a nuclear plant, got dropped as a baby, and had a lot of rocks thrown at him because the um, drain plug on the engine, which is also a composite pan, lands right on your coolers and on your on the sway bar. Now that's gonna be a that's gonna be a problem because we want to do an oil analysis. All the oil is gonna run in here and it's gonna make a big giant mess. So yeah, good job Ford. Um, maybe just angle it down on the pan, like right here. It's impossible to get a clean sample as it's running onto the sway bar. Um, we could drop the sway bar, but I don't, I don't want to disassemble the poor guy's truck. <laughs> just, ay ay ay, stupid, stupid, stupid. It's just gonna make a mess. Anyway, we'll figure it out. Other than that, underneath here, looks as good as the Top side, actually. Very, very happy with it. So, here we go. All right, so we dropped the uh, sway bar out of the way, just, and honestly, I recommend doing that. If it's just, it's just four bolts, it drops right down, you can pop it right back up again. 
um, and at least you don't make a big giant mess. Now, um, what we're doing is an oil analysis, so it's kind of like peeing in the cup at the doctors. They send this uh, away to a lab, and they will tell you that you are healthy or um, you should start making your final preparation. Hopefully, we're not at that uh, stage with this engine. What we do is we fill it up to the line, uh, we send that out to the lab, and they will um, see what kind, what they find in the oil, whether it be water, different kinds of steel, brass, aluminum. Uh, they'll tell you if there's combustion in there. That means that it's leaking past the rings. An oil analysis will tell you all the different metals and whatnot is in your oil, but you're always gonna have some parts. So a lot of them will tell you uh, when it's starting to get dangerous, but if you do multiple of them, you can start to see a trend, whether um, you have kind of the same amount or a little bit less once your engine is wore in, and then all of a sudden you see a spike, you know there's a problem. Now these oil analysis are very common heavy equipment where you're spending a lot of money because there is a large capacity oil pan. Still worth it for a gas engine, so we're gonna do it. We're gonna drain the oil, uh, start to let it flow, let it flow out for uh, about halfway and try to grab some of the oil in the middle of the stream as it's coming out. So, here we go. Process oil change, we're using the Pennzoil Ultra Platinum, the full synthetic, it's made from natural gas. So rather than refining crude oil, start with something nice and clean and make it perfect for this little five liter. I want to start off by saying that um, oil analysis are very beneficial to show you something detrimentally wrong but the best way to make the most of them is to do multiple ones and see if any trends are getting worse. This engine is past its break-in procedure so engines will wear more in its first couple oil changes than it will later. Um, once it finds all the parts start talking to each other and and are in agreement and the sizes that they're going to be um, your wear should be less um, talking to the owner he said that he did work the engine pretty hard when they first when he first got it meaning he probably uh, lugged it and uh, did some burnouts whatever that is the best thing that you can do for an engine now each engine manufacturer will have its um, recommended break-in oil procedure but the best thing is to actually lug it when we rebuilt diesels at the shop that I worked the first thing we do is put it on the dyno and let it run under load for about 15 minutes and you could see generally in those 15 minutes we'd gain about 10 percent of the horsepower so if we started out at 60 we'd end up with 66 horsepower on a, on a 60 horse rebuild that being said all wear levels it says here appear to be within the acceptable limits for the silicone level the sealant and the material used for the gaskets and stuff is satisfactory. There's no water in there, but it does say the uh, best thing to do is to take multiple samples. So there's no coolant in there. The water is less than five parts per million and all the aluminum, nickel, silver, titanium, and vanadium are all less than one part per million, except for titanium, which is 24. Uh, touch high, but still um, within the acceptable limits. So. That being said, we're gonna post this up. You can take a look at it. And uh, happy to say that this five liter gets a clean bill of health. So, um, is it a good truck? I think so. Um, much better uh, rust control than we've seen on other makes that we've reviewed. And um, if it wasn't for the tires and the exhaust, it would be a very nice driving truck, I'm sure. Austin, good news. It's actually in really good shape. It's good. 
There's a couple things I don't like. The ride is pretty stiff. It is pretty stiff. Uh, Stancy Boy wheels be like that sometimes. Yeah, yeah. They and look like, pretty, so. They, uh, and I figured that. <laughs> Driving other trucks, I'm like, wow, by the end of the two and a half hours, it's kind of tired. Yeah. But yeah, there's only, there's only a couple things I don't like about it, and that's just your wheels and tires and your exhaust. That's fair. <laughs> that's fair. Towing a trailer with that exhaust is awful. <laughs> it screams in the cab the whole time. I figured, you know what, if I'm spending the money on fuel, I might as well get to hear it. So yeah, that's true. That's true. So I, I, maybe I lost my touch and I'm too old. Okay. So we did the oil analysis. It's not burning oil. If it rode nicer and it might with the stock setup, I never drove one with a stock setup. I would, I wouldn't hesitate to buy this one. But, it it uh, definitely did ride nicer. Oh, on the okay. Stock okay. Tires. All right. Good. But they didn't look as nice. No, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> so you gotta stand out. Awesome, I appreciate it, Austin. Good luck on, uh, on the way home. All right, so this is our first used vehicle review, just out of warranty, a couple years old. Something for you guys to know what you're looking for when buying a used vehicle that's depreciated enough that they're actually affordable. Uh, definitely comment down below if I missed anything, if there's uh, anything to look out for in this 2020 F-150, experiences that you guys have had that didn't show up in the review, um, and let us know. So uh, and I encourage everybody to read the comments down below. I sometimes get things wrong, so definitely correct me, but we we appreciate you guys watching regardless uh, we want to keep doing these so if you have a two or three year old vehicle nothing older than that that is still within 50 to 100 thousand kilometers send us an email at thebossgarage at gmail.com uh, we need to know where you live and a way of getting a hold of you phone number wise so that uh, we can reach out we need to do an oil change when it's due for an oil change so that we're not doing an oil analysis on a brand new engine and um, we can get some more of these reviews out to you guys now. Uh, remember, if you're not filthy, you're not rich. So get out there, work on your car, or work really hard to afford a new car. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> here we go.